Can you hear that buzzing? Those are the bees behind me, hundreds of thousands of bees. Honeybees play an important role in the fertilization or pollination of lots of the crops we like to eat, not to mention the flowers we admire at this time of year. June is National Pollinator Month, so let's talk about pollinators. I'm Jane Lindholm, and this is But Why from Vermont Public, where we explore what's happening on your local landscape each month. Today, we're going to talk about pollination. Pollination is a crucial part of plant reproduction, and it's called pollination because it involves pollen. Plants need to take the pollen from one plant to another plant in order to fertilize. But as we all know, plants can't move on their own. So they employ a number of strategies to get that pollen from one plant to another. And one strategy is to entice flying animals to stop by for a visit. Now, when that flying animal comes in, maybe because of the bright color of the flower or the nectar it knows is inside, it might get a little bit of pollen on its fur or legs in the meantime. And then it flies off to another plant or flower and deposits a little bit of that pollen in the next flower while it's getting some new nectar. Now, there are lots of different kinds of pollinators, but today we're going to talk about maybe the most famous pollinator of all, the honeybee. And I'm in Stockbridge, Vermont with a beekeeper, James Key, to learn more. Hi, James. How you doing, Jane? I'm great. It's a great day to be a beekeeper. Awesome day to be a beekeeper. So the bees, as they come by those flowers, they're not doing it to be kind and help the flowers pollinate. What's in it for the honeybee? Well, what's in it for the honeybee are a few things. Now, the primary thing is food for them. And what they're doing is gathering that food, collecting that pollen, the nectar that they need, bring it back to the hive. When there's a really good source of pollen or nectar that one bee has found, and she wants to tell all of her sisters in the hive where to go to find it, honeybees have this amazing thing they do called the waggle dance. Can you describe it? The waggle dance is a really great signal. And what that signal is, is identifying to all the other foragers in that hive that there is a great resource to bring back to that hive. The waggle dance is amazing. They have a way of sort of waggling their body in the direction of the source. And in fact, one of the most amazing things researchers have learned is that honeybees also use the sun by the direction of their angle in the waggle dance. They're actually triangulating with the sun to let other bees know exactly what direction to fly in. So once they've all been to that amazing source of nectar and they're bringing it back to the hive, let's talk about how they make that nectar into honey. So when they return into the hive, they're gonna take that pollen and nectar and find different cells in areas of that beehive to store it. So yeah, it can sign gross because they're using a little bit of their spit or enzymes, saliva, and I'll put that in a cell. So when you're opening the beehive and you see a frame, you'll see where it's very shiny and glossy and it's liquid. Mm -hmm. So that liquid source will become our honey. Well, I'd like to see if some of those frames of pollen and nectar that you and I have just talked about. So let's go into your hive. Yes, let's do that. So what I'm doing now is introducing the smoke to the foragers. All right, so we're gonna go and inspect. So as you can see, the bees are really calm. And what I'm looking for is their agitation, their noise level. And I'm slowly taking this off because it might stick. And I'm gonna give a small twist. Then I'll take the Would box you like me to off. Do that for you? Sure. Now that we've taken off that, you can see that they're building pretty well. We're gonna do what they call a tilt. So you can see the different kinds of burr comb. And on the bottom, you'll see these larger cells. Those are mostly drones. Now that we know there's nothing major going on in here, so I'm just gonna set this deep right over here, right on that box. So right here, as an observer, I can see there's Plenty of bees, that's obvious, but what's also inside this hive, I want to really take a look at. 
So what I see here is in this beautiful frame are all the resources for our honeybees. I see this beautiful color pattern of orange, yellow, gray, teal, gray, tan, different pollens, which are all the different flowers and resources and that nectar. So as I put this frame down, I'll gently and carefully lean it against the beehive over here and I'll continue to work. Okay, so this is the nectar that surrounds the, the brood. And as they're fanning this nectar to get all that moisture, they're turning it to the honey, which this is sealed honey. Now, James, as we're looking at this, this hive looks really healthy, but not all honeybee hives and not all pollinators in general are doing well. We've seen over the last few decades a real challenge to pollinator communities of many different kinds of animals. So if people are concerned with pollinators, and they should be, what can they do to help? There are so many different ways you can help. For some communities that I've spoken with, they've started their small, what we call pollinator gardens, where they've dedicated a patch of lawn um, simply to grow beautiful flowers. You could actually create a pollinator garden with your classroom, school, or family. Even if you live in a city, you have native pollinators, and you could create a garden in a road median, on a rooftop, or in a neighborhood park. James, it's been such a pleasure being in your apiary today and seeing the inside of a honeybee colony. Thank you so much to you and your bees. Thank you, Jane, for visiting my apiary, and the ladies thank you as well. <laughs> And you know, when you help pollinators survive, you're not only helping them, you're also helping yourself. Because so many of the fruits and vegetables we love to eat, not to mention the trees, plants, and flowers we admire on our landscape, rely on pollinators to survive. So the next time you see a bee at your picnic, don't swat at it, thank it. Mm -hmm.